Yeah. What's up, y'all? Small TV. Got my man, Pedro. Right? You heard him. Pedro. Yeah, though. KG, KG. KG. Yeah, I mean, we about to get into this interview exclusive. Smug TV, man. What's up, brother? What's up, Smug? Let's go. Yeah, Smug. Yeah, yeah. Man, I'm telling you, know, uh, if you've been tapping into my channel, you know, lately I've been, like, covering a lot of people from the city, you know what I mean, asking them a lot of questions on how they was raised and their timeline and all that stuff, type, you know what I mean? So, you know, I see you be doing a lot of things and, uh, you know, you're definitely an important figure to the community. So, you know, I had to tap in with you, you know what I mean? And I see you about your business progression and all that, you know, setting examples. So, uh, first off, how you doing today, bro? Anything great, man. Blessed, cuz. Shout out to Smug TV. Let's get it, you know. All right, so where you from, bro? To the people that don't know. Well, I'm from the east side of Pittsburgh, Homewood area. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Pittsburgh, Homewood. Uh, how would you describe Pittsburgh, Homewood? For the people it's that a, don't know. For the people that don't know, it's a, it's a pick your poison environment. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of solid shit going on, and it's a lot of non-solid shit going on, depending on, you know what I mean, what you went to. But for the most part, growing up, east side of Pittsburgh was fun as fuck. Okay, so, um, like, growing up, did you live in, in Homewood, like, your whole life? I was like, born in St. Clair Village. Okay. Southside. All right, so a lot of people, you know what I mean, or is from Homewood, or the hill mainly, you know, so, like, are you really originally from, like, the south side or, like, the east side? I moved, I probably moved to the east side super quick within, like, months. I might have been on the south side for, like, a year or two. Okay, so, like. I never went to school over there, none of that. I ain't never, I mean. Okay, so, like, uh, like how did you grow up? Like, single house, single parent household, mom's dad? Me, mom, Dukes, my big sister. Big sister. Shout out Ray on Okay, like, how, how many years older is she than you? year and a half almost two years older than me okay now like what years was that like as a childhood what years was that like the 80s or the 80s God. okay so the 80s is like known for to be like a treacherous time you know uh explain like can i get an example about on how it was growing up you gotta figure like in 1980 something in st clair village early it's a lot of robberies going on. It's a lot of drug dealing going on. It's a lot of pimping going on. And then moving straight to Homewood, it was the same thing, but it wasn't structured the same because it wasn't projects. You feel me? Okay. But all crime and all poverty and all fun. <laughs> so you saying like seeing it as like projects was a little bit more organized than, you know, like neighborhood blocks and stuff like that? It seemed like for me like all the gangs that come from projects got more structure. Okay, so during the eighties it's like when the gangs was in Pittsburgh? There was groups in the eighties. The gangs probably came in ninety two. Nineteen ninety two. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh I did an interview with Tung Bone and he was the one that told me that the that Homewood was like the first the first neighborhood where the, uh, you know, the crypt flag was going on at. You know what I mean? Like, we take pride in that. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, I wouldn't stamp none of that. You feel me? Okay. Because if you do your research, gangbanging was taking off all over the East at that same exact time. Like, for a while, at home, we was like, man, we started crypts on the East Coast. That's, yeah, that's how what powerful I'm saying. we got. That's what I'm saying. Like, they, he said the East Coast was like, well, Homewood was the first East Coast neighborhood. I mean, we speak highly on that. We take pride into that. But the actual research on that, I ain't standing. Okay. I'm going to say we started in 92. So if there was any official crip sets on the East Coast before 92, then they was before. But if you wasn't stamped, you wasn't approved before 92, then we set it off. All right. So, uh, you know, I'm a little bit, I'm younger than you. So, you know, now, like, neighborhoods are split up, like, with, like, yeah, I mean, so what, how was it back in the day? Back in the day, it'd be 50 Homewood Lincolns and 50 Lincoln niggas 
all together. 1992. Crips, Eastside Crips. Okay. So, like, when did, like you said, it started in 92. Like, how old was you around that, around that 92. time? 92. I was probably 11. 11. Mm -hmm. So how was it, like, from seeing, like, the transition from it not being gangs everywhere to then gangs being everywhere? It was weird as fuck. And, like, we could... In a year span, whatever your mom had bought you before your wardrobe, you had to change that shit. So I had 49er shit. I had, you know what I'm saying, red skin shit. Man, in a year span, that shit went straight to the trash can or heading where my mom couldn't find that shit. I could not wear that shit no more. Hell yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it was serious on some color shit. It was it was dangerous for ladies to walk the street with red on the 92. Now where do you think, like, what do you think influenced that, that change? Like to be so heavy. I'm going like, to keep it 100. Like there be people speculating like who brought it, what influenced the change. But to me, it seemed like the music and the movies was what niggas was moving like. Shit's dropping. I don't give a fuck what was Boys in the Hood, Juice, all that shit that was dropping around that time, Probably. the whole world was emulating that shit. Okay. Like you feel me? So you get like a lot of it comes from movies and entertainment and shit like yeah, that. Yeah. Because yeah. so, that's when like Boys in the Hood Boys came the out. South Central. So, yeah, okay. And some of these movies is based on real gangs. When you listen to the knowledge of like South Central, they keep saying certain shit. This is a real set in California. They just ain't saying it. If you know, you know type shit. Yeah. You feel me? So. Yeah, the movies and the music influenced the gang culture in Pittsburgh. I don't know who the, who the guy was, though. You know what I'm saying? All right, so, so you're standing around like 11 years old is when, like, you seen the gang culture hit the city. Yeah. Oh. All right, so uh, from there, like, like I've heard, like, the fat, what is it, four, five, six Crips? Steer yeah. Street Crips? Like, yeah, like, how was that originated? If you know, like, you know what I mean? Like I'm a younger, I'm a young homie to to those guys. They okay. Was down with that. I know them all. Yeah, it's a big, heavy reputation with that. You know what I mean? But to to, to dig into their politics, like that, that wouldn't be my, that would be unofficial crippling on my behalf. Like okay. I can't dig that deep into their politics, but that set is a very reputable set from my hood. Okay. Very reputable set. So, like, a lot of people say, like, that was the first Crip set to come over to the to Homewood. Like, can you, you know any information on that? I'm going to say them niggas was who I saw Crip. They were some of the first ones putting it down. They were some of the first person, niggas putting it down. For home. I seen it. I seen it. They got recognized. They got recognized. Yeah, yeah. All right. Damn. Uh... Most, uh, for most of what? All that steady 500 shit, all that shit, that's when that. Yeah, you can't, you can't. Even put home with on the map you can, with the you gotta, shit for real. You gotta include for most of with that. All the way off. around the block. All the way around the board. You gotta put for most of the way, Street. To me, for most of was, or, a you mean, niggas had a shootout with, with the police, like they was or NWA. Yeah. Out of hood. Mm -hmm. That's a real and, shit. And, and these, these get now for most of the way, they they so reputable. We remember back in the day where the Ku Plus Klan was talking about coming through there. They gonna walk down from most way because they was hearing how dangerous it was. They weren't from Pittsburgh. Up, and niggas booted up. And but they waited. talking about yeah, man, we ain't scared. We'll walk down from most way. These niggas is reputable. You feel me? These niggas is real reputable. So did that ever happen? Hell no. <laughs> we was them niggas was waiting on that. And as a little kid hearing about that shit in the hood, yeah. nigga, I'd have been right with them niggas. We'd have been kicking well, their ass. Uh, so, you know, like, Crippin was, like, introduced as, like, community revolution and progress, right? Yeah. I mean, so was that, like, a standpoint where they were displaying that type of... Once we got to it, we ain't never get to the... to the. We never got that part of it. In 92 okay. in L.A., okay. they wasn't on that. Yeah. They was beefing Crip against Crip and blood against blood by then. So all that was out the door in 92. In 92, it was about... Nigga, who was the hardest Crips, who was the hardest Bloods, who was the hardest law niggas, who was the hardest Gs, yeah. That's all it was about. It wasn't no structure. All right, so, you know, gangs usually, yeah, I mean, migrate through somebody stamping somebody else type shit. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So, uh, you know, 
quick, like four, five, what is it, four, five, six Steer Street Crips? Mm -hmm. You know, like, was that just something that was, I don't know, like you said, I don't want, you ain't got to tap into their That's a Pittsburgh policy. thing. Okay, so it's, it wasn't like nothing from a different area. Because nah. there is rumors that. It, it, came, it is rumors that it came from another area. And I know that the actual color of the flag came from another area. Niggas can't brought that here. Okay. But I think they came up with their own numbers, if I'm not mistaken. Like, okay. it's just a, a original Crip set. Okay. With with a with a person that came back here to stamp this the flag and drop that flag right here in the community and niggas ran with whatever they ran with. It it ran like a wildfire. All right, so I've been asking around and I got some information. Like I heard that you know one of the first Crip sets was like something called Farmhouse Crips that came over to Pittsburgh. Farm dog. Farm dog. Okay. Compton. From Compton, it's like how. Grape Street. Grape, yeah, Grape, Grape Street. Grape Street came early in, in Pittsburgh. Okay. Grape. They was early as 92, just like all that shit. Hilltop is Grape right, Street. Hilltop, nigga. Hilltop okay. is Grape Street. They was, they was probably the only Crip set in Pittsburgh that had a structure that came directly from a from the West, and they had that structure, Grape Streets. Okay. So, like, that's definitely original, because, you know, a lot of people don't know about that, because, you know, Hilltop still, you know, do the blue rag instead of the purple rag. You know what I mean? Shit, you got niggas that from up there that did a purple at every now and then. Yeah, I mean now I'm, I'm starting to see it now. now and, even in the, know, even in the, back then, rest in peace, Bartolini. Yeah, I see, yeah, see him. Have a purple rag on. This is in the nineties. I seen him on the video too. Yeah, I mean, right. you might have caught Bartolini with a with a purple flag on back in the day. You know what I'm saying? All right, so now this is all on the east side. Yeah, you know I mean. East side, yeah. All right, so, like, what about other areas? You know what I mean? Like, I don't, like the Farm Dog, somebody also told me, like, Farm Dog Crips converted to another Crip set. Is that, is yeah. that? All right, so can you explain that? It's hard to, for me to explain it, because my structure ain't come through that. Okay. It's like, you gotta be, for real, that's an original, that's a conversation that I would have to have the OGs to have with me without me doing, putting no fabrication on it. You feel okay. me? That's a conversation I would have to have with the OGs like, yo, how did y'all catch that farm dog wave? Or how was that dropped on you? Okay. You know what I'm saying? All right, so, uh, you know, growing up, experiencing all this, how was that for, uh, you know, the average child? Yeah, you know I mean, growing uh, up was, in the it community. Was, it was booted. It was, it was amazing. Okay, now explain that. It was amazing because I'm in, I'm I'm active. Ninety two, I'm stealing bikes. I'm fucking I'm hitting cars, nigga. In ninety two, at eleven years old, I probably was brought back to my crib with, by the police about three four times actually. Okay. I'm having a fucking amazing time. My dad overseas career type shit. He can't. He, there's nothing he can do about it. My Ray, she going through what she going through. I'm living at my auntie crib. Yeah. Kelly Street, nigga. I'm right there in the mix of it. 92. Formosa Way Park, right there across from me. Nigga, the Way Way Crips behind me. Steer Street Crips on the corner. Yeah, I'm right in the middle of all that. Now, at that time, that's when, like, crack cocaine hit the hit the communities, right? Crack cocaine hit the communities. Oh, that was way before that. That was, uh, that was 90s, all uh, right. Yeah, crack came earlier than that. Like, crack came in uh, probably about, like, 90. 90! Yeah, but okay, so 88, bro, crack 88, came earlier than the gangs. My fucking crackheads was been out here That's way before the dope. gangs. So I would say about 88, dad, 89, no, dude, it was fucked up on crack. My dad was on powder, like 83, 85, mm -hmm. and he started fucking with that coke, like 89. Yeah, That's what he said. That's when that shit hit hard. That's when that shit hit hard. And they going that shit to this day. You heard me say it. I'm 43 years old, man. He's been on that shit all my life. You heard what he said? All right, so how about like the migration from like the east side of Pittsburgh to the rest of the city? Uh, you got, you know how any of that happened? Like, yeah, man, I know like different sides, like the north side and- Look, this is what fucked me up, right? In 92, you had different sides of the city tripping. I don't know how it spread or what hood it caught on first, but you had some wild ass south side crippin'. Okay. Yeah. You had Crips on the South dropping, going crazy. Bell Silver, St. Clair, 
that shit was unreal. There was a lot of shit going on. It wasn't nothing but blue over there. It was all crips. The whole South was just crip. Now, did that like, did that like, like create some type of unity within like oh, they that? They fuck with the hood. Like that type of. You know what they mean? didn't even fuck with each other on the South between they hoods that was cripping over there. They was beefing. But Homewood niggas got tasked to all the South hoods. Okay. We over there. We in Bell Super. We in St. Clair. And them niggas is down here. I know, I know over on the south side, Arlington. Arlington, they, shout out to them, Crips. They was like the they was wearing purple. Okay, okay. Yeah, you know I mean, yeah, I was about to say it's like that, like some type of connection with the hilltop. Mhm. Mm I know they was going crazy up that motherfucker. Shout out to Arlington. That Somebody else told me Hazelwood was food. like Great Street. Is that? I'm not. I know. I know Hazelwood go Crip crazy. Jungle. Them motherfuckers go. If you was cripping in the 90s from Pittsburgh, you was a hard ass hood. I don't give a fuck. Not, shout out to the Bloods. The Bloods was hard. But I'm saying you there wasn't no off brand sucker ass crip niggas in 1992 in Pittsburgh. Alright, now did that create like situations with like different neighborhoods that wasn't crips? What? East Hills jumped right off. Bloods. They was they they painted the city red. The Hill District, they jumped on fire. They was flaming it. You couldn't wear blue around them niggas. The regatta, nigga, if the hill caught you like dressed like me right now, at the regatta that was down there, down the street from they hood, in the 90s, they was whooping on shit. You had to go down there deep as hell. The gangbanger was taking off. Okay. You feel me? So I was just on some shit like, oh, he got a different color on. Just because he got a different color on. They was surrounding the fuck out of you. Hey, I, <laughs> you know how they get? <laughs> yeah. And they was moving on that shit. And home with niggas automatically, homies, cut our persona, the way we talk, we giving it up. They going to know where we from. Nobody. Like, that's why did you say that? Because I was going to ask that next. You know what I mean? Like, in the city of Pittsburgh, every neighborhood got, like, something that they, you know what I mean, put, put like, you know what I mean, they dead homies. You type, type, you know what I mean? So, homeboys say homies, and a lot of the crypt sets say homies. Like, where, where did that come from? That's California, giving it up to us, showing us how to pay respect to the homies. If you see California niggas give it up, they always say it. Rest in peace to my dead homies. So we just chopped it. Homies. We don't say none of that. Rest in peace, none of that. We just say, man, homies. You feel okay. me? We short, short and sweet with it. Homies. You feel me? All right, so when that first started, I guess other neighborhoods start doing different stuff. So, they put they homies. They made they homies different shits. Yeah, so how, where did, like, with some, when did you start hearing that? Like different neighborhoods Super going? Super fast. The hell niggas with naps, AI, these is people that they represent and they, they screaming and they, everybody start putting it on their yeah. Whoever they, they, they hood heroes was. That became some of these slogans for the gangs. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Okay, okay. You, was, you would hear a nigga just flat out say a nigga name. Okay. Like, you know what I mean? Like his homie might have passed away. Nigga, like my, my niggas will say some shit like, man, pistol. You feel me? That's a person. Yeah. He might say kill Dre. That them is people. We might not say homies all the time. We might actually shout one of their motherfucking names. You know what I'm saying? Hell yeah. After a while, police cut on. You know what I mean? Indictments hit. Shit like that. Um, you know, one of the one of the one of one of the indictments that happened in Pittsburgh was like the law indictment. You know what I mean? Like, like. What was it like to experience something like that? Not really experience, but know that something like that can happen. All right, so basically like the start for us, like I was running with so many niggas from my hood. I ain't claim a specific street at first. So uh, I'm not no, I couldn't be no follower, but I was, I had support and backup of all my hood. I ain't really have, I ain't really choose a side yet. I was in a lot of niggas fights and shit. It was going on, going on. Okay. But then, like, one particular incident made me protect, choose my side or begin to represent, you feel me? I went to my big homie. He been wanting me to bring him in, rest in peace. He been wanting me to represent with him and what they had going on, but I am not no follower. I just love him and I just respect him. So we move together. But rest in peace, scummy. Um, I chose my own lane. I started my own set in the hood, big respect, and we started dropping shit. I got indicted, all that type of shit. On Crips. So what you mean, like when you say you started your own I'm shit? I'm from Wildlife Crips. It's a set that I started. I'm the originator of that shit type. You feel me? 
And it was just from, we from Adderwild Street. We wasn't doing all the destructive shit, but that's where we from. We from Adderwild Street. Okay, so wildlife comes from Adderwild. Adderwild, wildlife, Chris. Okay. You feel me? So yeah, that's what that was. I uh, I see you always wear like the neighborhood 60s stuff like always because I got homies that was in jail with me they from 60s I love neighborhood Crip. I love Crips period okay. but I was in prison with a whole bunch of 20s and 60s so we had formulated a little group in prison it was just called the neighbors okay. so it was just 20s and 60s everything I huh. came home with that shit in my thought process but I I, uh, I elevated on to like you know what I mean I ain't screaming None of that right now. I'm screaming elevation. But yeah, that's what that came from. Being in prison with them niggas, them being so solid and money. just getting money and eating with the same niggas every day. Niggas got your back, all types of shit. That shit migrate, bro. So, and being in Homewood, niggas just street bang. Yeah. You are your street crib. That's all it is. There ain't no structure behind it. So when I was in prison with niggas that had structure on it, it made them niggas start coming out here, seeing me, me, seeing them, going take a trip and shit like that. You migrate to shit like that. You feel what I'm saying? So it definitely rubbed off. Neighborhood 60s and 20s. I love that shit out there. You know what I mean? All right. So how do you feel about, you know, a lot of people claim like neighborhoods, neighborhood this and neighborhood that now in Pittsburgh. You know what I mean? Younger, younger you, generation. It's okay if you know somebody. Like I said, I was influenced by them niggas. The actual niggas that was from out there, I was influenced. I ain't saying no names because this shit's sticky. But at the same time, like, I was influenced. They had my back. Niggas was defending each other. It just grew on me, bro. So, he said a lot of this new generation. They, they don't even know about this shit. Records and jokes. Just from here and it's the Fashion. A lot of the new niggas, if you a new nigga, it's Nipsey Hussle put a lot of motherfuckers going in the neighborhood. Say that again. Nipsey Hussle put a lot of motherfuckers going in the neighborhood. Nipsey Hussle made it popular for even us in Pittsburgh to be the same thing. Like he made that shit cool as fuck. Like, like I didn't like going to prison with these niggas and, and seeing what it was, it'd be different though. So I feel like if you tapped in with them niggas and they and they and you got niggas out there to fuck with you or I feel like it's alright. But I feel like if you just seen it on the on the screen and just start banging it, I feel like you gotta go get your ass whooped or something. Like you gotta feel with them, <laughs> like let them niggas jump you in then, fool. Like if it's like that. But see, for me, I'm that's why for me it's different. Okay. Yeah, I love them niggas. I, I my, like I said, I was in prison with a group called the Neighbors. They was all rolling sixties and twenties. So yeah, you might see me giving it up for them all the time. But at the same time, I'm from Wildlife Crip. I started my own shit. I don't follow no nigga. I'm, niggas gonna follow me or it ain't nothing. That's it. I'm not following no nigga. You feel what I'm saying? Okay. Like, free the guys. All right, so, uh, you know, like, a lot of people be like, okay, like, home with this neighborhood Crips. You know what I mean? Like, that's... That's, that's, not, that's not true. There's just a lot of... There's okay. a lot of niggas that claim neighborhood Crip down there. That's what I'm... And there's only... There's, it's so shallow, my nigga. It's like... 10 real neighborhood crips on it. Okay. But I got Southside niggas that are really neighborhood crips too. So in the city now, to formulate the neighborhood crips or to even be affiliated with them, you gotta put the city together to get them deep. You feel me? It's not one neighbor, one neighborhood ain't gonna have a hundred rolling sixties. You feel me? But if you got your Southside niggas that bang neighborhood, there's the niggas in, the, in our hood that bang neighborhood and the collective groups, if we have a cookout, it's definitely a hundred of us. You feel me? Okay, okay. So, you know, growing up, you know what I mean? Went through the, you seen the gang banging in the Homewood. Um, you know what I mean? You said you went to jail, got indicted. Um, you come home, like, was you making music at this time? Because I know a lot of t a lot of people was making music in the 90s that was like... And as a kid, I used to be young as hell, freestyle battling, all the big crips. They used to be like, he gonna be hard as fuck on the table. So you used to battle a lot? Yeah. Uh -huh. I used to battle grown-ass men. I used to see them having a cypher and just step in it and battle. Re or, um, free my nigga chicken. Homies used to give me, so he used to give me gassed up. I used to be tearing grown up. Up uh, freestyle, he's like young cuz when he get his word play together, he's gonna be solid because he got the confidence. You feel me? All right, so when did you start doing that? Like 
having a. As soon as I got to Homewood, I became a rapper at like four years old. Okay. I don't give a fuck. I thought I was every rapper. LL, Cool Modi, all the motherfuckers. I was in Homewood acting like them. This is no gangbanger, nothing. Kango hat on. Yeah. Mom, I want a big fat ass gold chain. Yeah. I always acted like the entertainers from the brick. Hell yeah. So, uh, you know, you, you was rapping and battling like, what was like the first time that you was like, yo, I'm a, I want to make a song. Or I want to make a jam. First time I probably made a jam. Listen, nigga, I used to put the motherfucking, uh, plug the little fucking microphone into the stereo system back in the day and hit record on that bitch and dub my flows while the beat was playing on the other tape joint. Yeah, I've been yeah. recording myself since like eight years old. Little, little real shit. Okay. And and taking it back to the hood, letting niggas listen to it. Niggas like, bro, you rough as hell. Hell yeah. Like when I, when you was doing that, you said it was like LL, Cool Mo D and all that. Like was there any artists in the city that, you know what I mean, yeah. you was listening to? No city influence at all in music, at all. It was all what you've seen on TV or the radio at that point. Okay. So, um... Like how, like is is rapping and music something that just stuck with you? Like you, I know I'm going to do it. It's too easy. It's too easy. I start once I start battling old ass niggas and keeping up with them, and I'm like seven, eight. It was, it was too easy. By the time I was about fifteen, I was writing for a whole group. Yo, you say this, I'm gonna say this. You say this. All right, who was you writing, writing for? I ain't even gonna put the walls out there like that. Now is it like artists in the city yeah, or artists it, in the city? Okay, I, right. I formulated a group. Okay, what was at that? 15 years old, that like, you know what I mean? So 15, you got to feel like about 97. I formulated a group. You feel me? Okay. Hey, Buster Committee. I formulated a group. This is old ass tattoo. I formulated this group in 97. But the way I would do it is I would write three verses and say, bro, you look better saying this, bro. And you should say this. You feel me? So he's like a producer. Yeah. Producing the, the whole I did the club. whole album like that. We. We, we dropped that shit in the hood. That shit went crazy. What was the name of the group? Headbuster Committee, HBC. Headbuster Committee. Mm -hmm. All right. So, uh, like, how many people was on that? Like, in that group? And was this like younger people than you? A whole bunch of us. Okay. Some niggas was coming with their own material. If a nigga just was my homie and he was hanging, I would just put him on and shit. Like, rest in peace, Juan. My nigga Hunter. Rest in peace, Brucey. We used to be deep as fuck. All right, another group that was out was like Rough Chemistry. Yeah. You know what I mean? Okay. Uh, Scorching Hot. Yeah. Like, is that around the time that y'all was doing that? Oh, uh, yeah. That matter of fact, they came, at, all that shit come after what I'm talking about. Okay. You figure Rough Kim probably dropped in 99. Okay. 98, I, maybe. I'm talking about my first shit probably dropped in 97. All right, but have you ever heard of like The Godfather from the Key Sport? Let's say that again. The Godfather from McKee Sport. It sound familiar. Okay, and Hellraiser Records. I just, shout I just did. To, shout out to Hellraiser Records. Yeah, I heard of them. Okay, so I, I know. Two Craze. Oh, yeah. Shout out to them. Yeah. Big Blood. Shout out to him. <laughs> yeah. All right, so, uh, you know. Uh, shout out to the Scorching Hot nigga. Shout out to P6. Yeah, him, nigga. All that. That's the scene right there. You feel me? So so the hell got a heavy presence at this time I'm talking about, but my hood does not. Okay. We might make a little couple songs just because we going at it with each other, but we're not putting it out there for the city to respond to. What, what about like D-Boys and stuff like that? They was familiar. I was familiar with them. Okay. Like I'm just trying to think of who else was out at that time. Wilkinsburg had a presence too. I can't remember who they was though. They had a presence, they were dropping. I can't remember who the record label was in Wilkinsburg at that time, they were dropping, but they did have it. Okay. And he is making no child there. Is there anything that stopped you from pursuing your music career? 12 years of prison, on and on. I just kept getting high to hell, like the city responded, like, yo, cuz. And then go straight to jail. First time going to prison, it was a murder case. I was stuck, like, wasn't no born and out type. I mean, first time going to jail, was a murder case type shit. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So it was like, I'm stuck. I don't really know nothing about none of this shit. Boom. Okay. How, how old was you when that happened? I probably was like 23, 24. 23, 24? Yeah. All right, so what was that experience like? Like just 
I ain't gonna say like the experience of it happening, but I'm just gonna say Rest like. Rest in peace, Dakota. I mean, we was it's Crips. We Crips. That just be on and be like that in the hood. Like rest in peace, Dakota, bro. We Crips, though. So Cripping normally, I'm gonna keep it a hundred. This is across the world. Crips just go against Crips, bro. Yeah. That's just what it is, man. Like we can't get that shit together, like, and that's crazy. You know what I mean? But you know. All right, now at that time, and you know, everything you got caught, like what was going through your head at that time? I thought it was up. I ain't never been to jail before. So it was like, I'm in this bitch, niggas are talking about, God, you about to, you finna get roofed. You know what I'm saying? Niggas are saying the wildest shit. I'm in there with niggas, watching them come back from court, roofed. Niggas are in their cell crying, all types of shit. You sliding food under the cell. <laughs> Nigga ain't can't got his tray three days, he got that life sentence. You feel me, cuz? So yeah, like I ain't know what was going on, but I ain't really give a fuck though, because because okay. my situation ended up being a justifiable homicide. The state, the judge knew I was defending everybody. There, you feel me? I, I wasn't on no wild shit at that point, right then and there on that specific situation. You know what I mean? But I still, yeah, rest in peace, cuz. You know what I mean? I ain't tripping though. All right, so. Uh... How long did it take you to, like, how long was the transition from jail to prison? Look, all right, so I come home from that shit. No, I'm saying, like, whenever you, whenever you did go to jail for the alleged murder, yeah, you know I mean, how long did it take for you to get to court to actually get your sentence? Two and get, years. I ain't get, like, it, two years, yeah. Okay, it took two years. Yeah. Now, what was that two years like for you? Wow, bro. Going from not being in jail to having to spend two years in jail. That shit was wild. I'm a spoiled nigga. I'm a spoiled nigga. Wild. Like, that shit was crazy. Like, my nigga, not eating what I want is a, is a lot. Not being around females, my family, that shit kicked my ass. And it was a body, so it was difficult, bro. Like, two years off the rip, I mean, not very, like, man. But after a while, nigga, I'm just going with the fuck. All right, now, what year was this around when you first went in there? Right, 05, 06, okay, now, this is like after really the gang wave, but that's like when 50 Cent came out, you know what I mean? All right, so, all right, so you finally get sentenced to prison. Where did they have you at? On that specific case, I ain't get sentenced to prison. I got sentenced to a justifiable homicide. Okay. So after I went to court for my sentencing, they sentenced me to a Two years and a year of house arrest for the pistol and cleared me on the murder saying that they knew I was defending the people I was defending. Okay. You know what I mean? Came home, did a year on house arrest. While I'm on a year of house arrest, my nigga get into some shit. I hop in the caddy with my house arrest bracelet on with my pistol and get grabbed by task force with the pistol on house arrest. Okay, so now you got to detain me for that. detained again for that. Sit for two more years on that pistol charge. Okay. Now, was that like a violation of your? It was a violation of my initial pistol that I just got and a new pistol. So what happened from there? I, I bonds out on that. I finally get the detainer with it. It's a regular county group. Go see them. They tell me what they're going to do to me. But they want to see the outcome of this case too. Bonds out on that shit and gets indicted under the cribs. Feel me? No, that, yeah, that was the head to be like 2000 and what? Seven. 2007. So from 2005 when I got the body to 2007, I went to jail for a body, a pistol, and got indicted under the Crips. All right, now, now like the indictment on the Crips, was that like just like a Homewood thing? Or no, was just that just an attorney general state indictment. It wasn't a Homewood thing, but it was mostly Homewood. It was like 80 of us from the city. All right, so how did they come up with that type of case? Like where 80 it was people. weak as hell. That's why the, the feds ain't pick it up. The attorney general was kept that shit. They was, I mean, just being on them phones, wiretaps, coming to the club, taking pictures of us, niggas throwing signs, throwing money, they had all that shit. Niggas ordering up drugs. Remember that shit, the Ben Roethlisberger scandal? Out in Moreauville Mall, I don't know if you're familiar with that. That was us. They had that shit all over. All of our sales was in Moreauville Mall stores and shit. Niggas dropping shit in these shoes. Niggas go, go grab them. They in a display joint. <laughs> niggas is busting big moves right in Moreauville Mall. Okay. So we on videotapes. Doing all this goofy ass shit. Okay, so. But we was happy that the feds didn't pick it up with the attorney general. 
Okay, so like what happened? Like, how was that experience? Nigga, when they, when they, when they dropped the indictment. Uh, so when they dropped the indictment in 07, 08, yeah. I ran, my nigga. Yeah. They ain't catch me. They just dropped my name on the news and I'm running like a motherfucker, bro. Okay. So I'm running for two years. 010. I'm out IUP hustling. Dope. Getting it. Uh, uh. We pushing probably like at least 100 pack of bricks out IUP a day. We really getting money. But I'm on the run. I know eventually I'm going to get caught. You feel what I'm saying? I got set up in the motherfucking hotel room out IUP with 100 bricks. Dope. Now how did that happen? Goofy ass white bitch I'm with her all the time. She gets mad as fuck because I keep like, out there. When you out IUP, any nigga that's from the city that was hustling out IUP, eventually you let the college motherfuckers lead you around. Nine times out of ten is going to be the bitches. You feel me? So hanging around them little hoes out there, you know what I mean? You might end up kicking it with one of them more, or they might end up showing you around more. At the moment you switch your little kicking partner out that motherfucker, Ah, oh, them little motherfuckers don't know how to take that. Jealousy. They start getting jealous. They'll set your ass up. That's what my situation was about. I'm in here with this other motherfucker running around. My main little motherfucker snap. She keep hitting me like, yo, where you at? You still with girly? I'm like, yeah, like, well, I'll be around in a minute. I don't be around that day. Next day, this motherfucker in the parking lot waiting. I'm like, bitch, I ain't call you, tell you to come down here. She's like, yeah, you with girly still. You feel me? So I was already seeing it was going to be a problem. By the third day, I start noticing that Shit was just weird, it was just off. So I'm like, yo, let's go back down the city, you feel me? We shoot back down the city. My phone blowing, it's going crazy. Hey, I'm like, yo, come up here, fuck that. I'm like, nah, it's hot up there, I ain't going back up there. And my man say, yo, bro, let's just go up there, let's just not go back where we is at, but let's go back up there. I go up that motherfucker, bro, the first motherfucker snap that came. When I came outside, hopped in my ride, told him to follow me, a third car followed all of us. I already knew from that one right already now, something weird as hell about this. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I dips the cars, goes in Walmart. It's the fucking snap fans me in Walmart. I'm like, yo, where, where'd you go? I'm like, yo, why the fuck did you follow me? Bro, here, here. <laughs> I mean, I'm like, yo, at this point, I'm probably set up the set up like a motherfucker or but I don't serve this motherfucker, right? I tell that send that motherfucker on his way. Goes back to my hotel, about 30 minutes later, they kick that bitch in. Boom, 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 boom. Police. The white bitch that I said was already jealous. Came off the next room as they kicked in this motherfucker as if she ain't had nothing to do with nothing. They walked right past as they were doing anything. I already knew she sent that shit. You feel me? But on my paperwork, it said anonymous call. So I'm on the run for this indictment in Pittsburgh with the Crips. Runs for two years. Catches a massive ass heroin case off in college. How you feel? Dead home. Now, whenever they put the indictment out, do they say, like, the, the Crip indictment? Yeah. That's your Ben Roethlisberger scandal. Oh, that's what it was called. It's my paperwork, the cribs. So yeah, yeah though. they put that shit on. And when you get upstate, as uh, soon as you got upstate, they gang foul the fuck out of yo cribs. It's in his paperwork. He did. Yeah, he wanted them. Mm -hmm. You feel me? All right. So uh, you know when you face an indictment, you face you see a whole bunch of charges that may or may not stick. You know what I mean? Like, so what was that experience like seeing that? Listen, man, you gotta think. Bodies, gun pistols. I felt like. Super gangster. So my, my ego was through the roof because I'm getting so much money in the streets and I'm facing all these charges. I'm like, nigga, I'm about to turn up in the pen. I'm about to finna go hustle in the pen. I don't give a fuck. I'm about to turn up. It wasn't no, I ain't really had no time to really think down about it. You feel me? Yeah. Even though it's probably eating me up low key, I'm in that bitch going nuts. I'm having a ball. I got a whole bunch of niggas in there with me. We going crazy. We eating together. We making alcohol and shit. We selling shit. We gambling. I'm not doing no, nah, bro. We wasn't doing that out there. We not doing that in here. You feel me? Okay. So that shit wasn't nothing to me at that point. The, the shit that kicked my ass, though, is like that, my children. Because I had, I got kids and shit. That's the shit that was really fucking me up. Like not having that type of uh, situation, though. Yeah, that was kicking my ass. All right, so how long did you do for that? So uh, when they grabbed me for the indictment, I probably, uh, I took, I was like, I was already on the run for the indictment. I took a deal for that shit. 48 months or some shit like that. Then I, the pistol charge, I took a deal for that shit. 22 to 48 months running with that shit. And then the IUP shit, being that I didn't make that sale when they tried to set me up, they ain't had me on a bad bus. Mm -hmm. Me being dumb, I'm supposed to fight that anyway. If it ain't no bad bus, this ain't no setup, nigga, I ain't got it. Me being dumb as hell, guess what they'd say? We'll do 22 to 48 months running with your other shit right now and give you your time, so you already got 26 months in. My stupid ass jumps right on the deal, bro, trying to get up out of there. Ah, uh, ah, uh, catches all that shit. 
So what you have to do, like seven or eight? Nah, forty eight months was the minimum. So you oh, do okay. your forty eight months, do you go you go see parole. Okay. You feel me? So I did like three and a half, damn near. They get a three like I did like three years upstate, but all my county time counted too. So you know what I mean? I, I yeah. Alright, so what year was that when you come home from that? That's like two thousand nine. I probably came home from that shit. What nah, that shit you gotta figure if it happened in 08, I had to do forty eight months. I probably got in like thirteen. 13. Like yeah. All right, so, uh, you know, coming home after spending time in jail, like, what's, like, what's the, what's it like to be outside, go to jail, and then come home? You know I, I mean? Like, I cherish this shit, though. I hate, like, I did all that shit in that short period of time, bro. That shit make me think, like, bro, just do your thing. Like, fuck all that other shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't be doing no too much no getting into no niggas beef none of that shit i got too much to live for for you know what i'm saying like if the shit coming back like if i can't avoid it i'm on ass like you know what i'm saying but at the same time it's like i don't be tweaking on that though you know what i'm saying i know i heard you got the business going on the dog camouflage brand. color show camouflage color show let's crazy talk about kennel. that me and my nigga kg crazy kennel camouflage color show shout out to wild Child kennels shout out to c and w kennel yeah Okay, That's so we doing. what made you get into that? Man, I came straight home from jail on it. <laughs> niggas up the state, Puerto Ricans and shit, they on that dog shit. Okay. So I'm seeing niggas pictures and shit. I ain't talking to nothing. I'm just taking it in my head like, yeah, man, we finna do this too. So I'm getting a little bit of money in jail and all that shit. I'm sitting in bread home like, yo, grab me a little bully or something. So when I come home, I, could, I got my little bully. So she grabbed some bullshit, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> She ain't know what the fuck they get. She got some bullshit. I come home, I grab a dope male though. Okay. So I grab a nice male, she got a bullshit female. But I'm I'm so tweaking to get this money back, I breeze the motherfuckers up. I let them do it. And the puppies come out slightly decent. Okay. I'm on some, let me get like 750 to a, to a stack of pup type shit. And that shit go in like two weeks, the puppies is gone. Okay. So you got rid of them pretty quick. Fast as fuck. So now you on some shit like yeah, I might be on this something, man. I mean, mm. all right. So how long, how long has it been? And like, what's what's some shit, experiences? That, that was 2014, first litter. It's, yeah, ten years now. Like, what's some experiences that you? What are some man, things I that you experienced? Ten dogs to the NFL. Ten dogs to the NFL. Ten dogs to the NFL. Shout out to me, huh? Like probably three rappers. Shout out to niggas, huh? I probably like two or three NBA. Bullies, pit bulls, XLs, pressing canaries, all types of shit. I'm like, damn. And I start hearing about the increments they was bringing in. I'm like, fuck that. Them niggas, that's like dope money. Like, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. So uh, uh, I ain't know much knowledge on it. But I start gathering pictures and shit. Niggas was giving me pictures. Hey, bro, this is what they look like. Boom. Came home. Shot blind. Grabbed one. Like I said. Oh, yeah. First, she the grabbed the bullshit. The, yeah, the first bitch was trash. But my mail was official. I grabbed okay. it from a reputable kennel. But me not knowing, I still hit those motherfuckers together. Boom. The quality was okay. But it was underneath of the mail, just quality, but above the bullshit bitches quality. Okay. In between. So it was like I was still able to get rid of the puppies for a little cheap rate. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so you shook back on that one. Yeah, yeah I shook back on that. Like, hey, say, come, I'm gonna holler right back and doing a little interview and shit, yeah. Yeah. All right, brother. My nigga. Uh, yeah, smug. Shout out to smug. But yeah, I shook back on that because the money, it came. I sold it. I made my money real quick. Probably made like 7000 8000 off a litter. But, you know, I come from pit bulls for $100 type shit back in the day. So I, I'm like, damn, I might be on to something because the bitch was trash, like I said. I took that money from that first litter and went to go get a good bitch. Okay. And then I took off from there. I right, so how much does it cost to like start this up, like to get your first litter? How much would you say that it costs for you uh, for starting out? If somebody was looking into it, if somebody was it, starting out and they wanted some great quality bullies, right? Yeah. You don't want to spend nothing less than thirty five hundred dollars on a dog. Nothing unless less than you know this quality is up there, and somebody's just doing you a favor. Okay. But you wanna, you wanna, you don't want no cheap ass dog. Okay. You want quality. So you would want two dogs. Two dogs at that you price. Seventy-five hundred. If you can squeak it in for two for seventy-five, you won. 
okay a lot of dog a lot of people i know they'll have a male and then they'll find a person with a female and then what they split the litter something like that you can do all types of shit with this joint you okay. know sometimes i might co-own a female to a person they might not have everything i'm asking for so what i'll do is i'll ask for a smaller increment and okay. we'll co-own a dog split the litter and split the product okay so uh like when it comes to choosing what breed of dog like how did you do that with me, I just, I go by what the customer's asking. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Me, I don't got no preference. I'm going where the money is going. If it's about the money, young, that's where I'm going. So if they want the big ass joints, I'm going to breed some of them big ass joints. If they say, yo, man, when you going to drop the micros, I'm going to drop the micros. You feel me? Okay. Now, you said uh, yours is called Camouflage. Right? Camouflage Color Show. Shout out to them. Huh. That's a couple camps together. But that's mainly me and my brother's shit. Me, shout out to my brother KG. That's me and bro's shit. We coming out there. We swinging for the fence. We just came back from Ohio, doing a major breeding. You know what I'm saying? So we we spent we put a lot of money in on this new shit. You feel me? All right, now is that like like some type of secret breed that y'all got, or nah, it, what is that? It's just the camp that we did it with was so reputable. Like you know what I mean? We was happy as hell to just do that shit with that reputable camp. You feel me? Yeah. All right. So how's that going for you? Like you did say, you just uh, went to Ohio. You know, did you your biggest what? Your biggest the biggest breeding man. Shout out to King Phoenix Kennels. We just did a, a breeding with them today. All right. Explain what that means to people that might so not know. So we took a we took a female that was in heat to Ohio today. Uh, we did a progesterone test on her to make sure she was ready yesterday. Took her up there today. We did the breeding today. That means like she's ovulating and ready she's to have a baby. Ovulating, ready to go. Our numbers is right. Everything. Okay. And we do everything AI, no contact breeding. Meaning they pull the sperm from the male, put in the syringe, drop it right in the female. No contact between the dogs. Is there a reason why? Because a lot like of that? dogs might not have all their vaccinations, illnesses, all types of shit, and they carry a lot of diseases that humans carry. You feel me? So you really don't want your dog touching just some, no random dog that you don't know the medical history. Of, you feel me? Now would that be like in the in the dog sperm as well, or it could genetics? Be in the male sperm, or now, just you know, by you contact. Drop, a male could get a, a female sick. Yeah. You feel me? So yeah, you gotta be careful all the way around the board with this. All right. So what's your plans with it? Uh, you said you've been doing it for like ten years, right? Listen, right. I think uh, what we gonna do this year? Uh, we're gonna drop the record label this year. New record label coming out. Gang culture entertainment, wildlife music, free my orders, dub, out of wild soldier, he'll be home very soon. He's dropping the album immediately. We already ready to go. Let's go. So y'all got you got music recorded already that uh you're we, gonna drop or everything gonna be fresh? We got a lot of fresh shit, but we got like two albums that he recorded before we went in that they ain't nobody never heard. We're gonna mix that in with a lot of new shit that we got going on. Boom, and we're gonna, we gonna drop this shit, you hear me? All right, so when did your artist go in that's coming home? He been down for like three and a half years. Free him, it's overdue. Huh, out of wild soldier, free dub, let's go. All right, so what type of music? You did say it's gang culture. Yeah, gang culture entertainment, wildlife music. Okay, so uh, we're expecting to hear a lot of gang shit on this music. Oh right? man, if you bang, I don't care what it is. Oh man, we looking for artists. Yeah, we putting on, we, we love the streets. Okay. Like, and we ain't segregating nothing. We cool with, uh, we about all that. If you just official from a neighborhood, a turf, and you bang, and you got music that ain't been heard, and we like what you sound like, get with us, man. We putting that shit out there for you. All right, now, your artist is coming home this month, right? Yeah, he come on this month. All right, all right. What's his name? And do he got... Free Doug, Out of Wild Soldier. That's how we come. And can we hear some of his music now? Is... Right now, he on Spotify. He got this joint called Cash App. And what's uh, it? Go tap in with him. Out of Wild Soldier. His name Dub. Let's go. So you're typing Dub. D U B B. Uh. If you type in Out of Wild Soldier on Instagram, you can get right with him. Uh. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. What's your contacts? Oh, my name Pedro Perion. All platforms. Yeah. Okay. 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 So you got the music label popping off. You got the, uh, you know, the breeding company going on. Anything else you got going on? Listen, man, we trying to get some housing. We okay. want a lot. Like, we want real estate. You know what I'm saying? We trying to get our hands in as much as possible, man. We done been through too much. We done took too many losses. 
Now all we're trying to do is win, you feel me? So right after we do this, uh, drop the label, we're going right back, grab some cribs, and yeah, we're going to get this shit going, you know what I mean?